Hola, hello, 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 buenos dias, good morning, my beautiful planner babes, welcome back to the channel, it's your girl here, Daniela, la planning diva, and today's video is going to be a complete voiceover because I just wanted to zone out in this moment and um, do what I came here to do and not worry about talking or about background noise because um, I do film in my garage and there's so much background noise um, in the middle of the day and it's currently uh, the middle of the day on Sunday. I wanted to film but I didn't want to um, have to talk over the video so I just decided to do a complete voice over and um, let's get into this video. So I am going to be decorating the cover page of my big happy planner. This is the uh, Tigger true to you happy planner from um the happy planners we need the poo release my mom actually got me this planner for my birthday and the cover is now on my flagship planner um my most beloved planner that i like to use a big happy planner for and i really need to set up my cover page and um I wanted to set it up very similar to how I have my grimoire set up um, with that really decorated fancy script and I thought I could use this Winnie the Pooh good as gold children's book to pull for some collage material to really zhush up the cover page. This book I actually bought at a thrift store for like a dollar or something and I bought it a long time ago because um this book was actually my all-time favorite book when i was a little girl um i always loved winnie the pooh and there was something about this book that made me so happy like the illustrations were beautiful the story was so cute and it just really made my heart sing and i read this book over and over and over as a little girl and when i found it again at a thrift store i decided to pick it up wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do with it. At first I kind of wanted to just hold on to it and save it for when I had children. Um, whenever I had kids I would have liked to give this book to them. But I also decided that if I ever wanted to use it like as scrapbooking material or as collage material, I could go ahead and use it. And I decided that it would be really cool to grab some um, of the pages from that book and incorporate it into some kind of collage work um, for this cover page. So the first thing that I did was pulled out this page and um, started sketching out my name. I decided to kind of elevate to the name line where you're supposed to write your name. I decided to pull it up a little bit closer to the hello this big happy planner um, belongs to text because I wanted to leave room um, on the second bottom of the page or the second half of the page on the, closer to the bottom to uh, collage with the Winnie the Pooh book. And so I used a ruler to kind of set up a line there and then I started sketching out my name really similar to what I have uh, sketched out before in other cover pages. And um, the one thing that I uh, quickly realized was that I had to make the eye a little shorter than I'm used to and um, I had a I had the fun idea of using a little B, like a Winnie the Pooh style B for the eye or the dot in the eye. And I'm just sketching out right now with a regular pencil and and then um, once I've decided I'm okay with the uh, with the skeleton of the design, I went in with my uh, I think this is my micron pen and it's in 0 0.5 millimeters. Just went in and started outlining all of the letters here. Um, this isn't perfect, but I'm trying not to get held up on perfection. Honestly, if I wanted this to be perfect, I probably would have erased the entire thing and scooched it all to the right, like about one centimeter because it is a little bit more biased towards the left. It's a little bit more kind of weighted to the left there, like it's not centered perfectly but again I'm trying to be okay with imperfections and I just decided to go for it. So then I went into the Winnie the Pooh book and pulled out a bunch of pages that I thought would be um, good candidates for like a scene at the bottom of the cover page. Um, there were so many that I was torn between but then I finally decided to go for this one where Pooh, Roo, Piglet, and Tigger 
are walking along this path, this grassy path in the Hundred Acre Woods. Super, 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 super cute. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to keep Tigger in the scene, um, and so I had to cut it off right at Tigger. But I got Pooh, Roo, and Piglet walking along. And I thought it looked super, super cute. And unfortunately, um, the scene was kind of split over two pages. So I had to uh, kind of glue these two pages together. And I used tape and Tombow adhesive to get it all on the page. And, um, and then I also decided to add Owl up in the corner here. I found this nice image. I thought it would be nice to add it in the corner here, a nice corner piece with the rainbow. And a, a nice trick I like doing is laying down the image kind of where I want it and then cutting the excess off there. And then at this point, um, I'm just putting down a little bit more Tombow adhesive to really secure that image to the page. And then I decided to add another corner piece, this one with just a, a rainbow. And the rainbows don't really match up between the left and the right corners, but I'm totally fine with that. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I just glued it down there, cut off the excess with my scissors. And at this point, I kind of want to fill in um, the rest of the corners that are left kind of encircling the page like um, I have those two pieces on the left and the right that don't and have any collage on them and so I just started looking for pieces that might fit in and so I came up with this piece right here and I just um, included a little strip of it there and again not perfect because um, the sky doesn't match up kind of perfectly with the owls the owl image but you know it's fine and then I went ahead and added another little strip on the other side just so it could come kind of complete the look of like collage all around the page. And then it was time to color in my name. And so I erased all of the pencil marks surrounding the pen marks. And then I went to go find my color pencils. Um, I don't remember why I picked up the page at this point, but I put it back at some point. And then I found my color pencils and I started to pull out um, the colors that I needed. I actually have like a guide or a legend of all of my color pencils. I have like a little swatch of each color pencil and then the name of the color pencil so I can immediately decide what colors I want to use and then pull for those colors. Um, I decided to go for a rainbow um, color palette for my name. I usually tend to work in like either monochromes or um, like a particular color palette. This is the first time I think that I've done like a rainbow um, color palette on my name for my name page. So uh, I was excited to see how this was going to turn out. First, I started working on my first letter D just to get a sense of how I wanted the colors to blend in with each other, how much of each color I wanted to include in each letter. And um, after that, I just blended in the colors together, um, try to decide what colors worked well with which colors and how much blending I needed to do. I also decided to start coloring the little um, a gang of Pooh and his friends up at the top. I thought it would be super cute to just color that in. Um, that little like image is a really good coloring book image and so easy to just color in for like an extra pop on your color page. So I went ahead and started coloring in Tigger with oranges and yellows and I think his like yellow, um, the, the parts of his body that are yellow like his mouth and his eyes and his stomach um the yellow that I used I think was a little too brown there was a little too much brown in it I think I should have used one that was a little bit more yellow but that's fine again uh, it doesn't have to be perfect and then I went in with the rest of the colors for the rest of my letters and I started adding in the yellows and the oranges and um I'll eventually start moving to the blues and the greens and the purples. Um, and I just started going um, color by color across the letters and then finally getting to the darker um, or the deeper colors of the rainbow here with the deep blues and the purples. I realized that I kind of need a mid-tone blue um, color pencil. I feel like I have 
these bright teals and bright blues and then I have a really deep blue and I don't really have a color in between so I made a note of that because I do always try to make sure that I have um, all of the colors um, that I need for color pencils and I, these are Prisma colors so they're expensive and I try to pick them up here and there so whenever I have like a couple of colors that I need uh, I just go to Michael's and I pick up like the colors that I have outlined that I need. And then I added um, white paint to all of my letters to kind of give it that shiny um, look to it. Um, I use acrylic paint for this, bright white ac acrylic paint, because it really pops. I cannot use like white gel pens um, on these color pencils. The, the color pencils are just too waxy and pigmented and deep, like white gel pen does not show up. I have to use acrylic paint. But I think it looks really, really good. I think the acrylic paint really pops on these letters. When I was in art uh, class in high school, I had an art teacher, I remember, who told me something I never forgot um, when it comes to like art technique, and that is that um, drawings and images that you create should have really bright whites, and they should have really dark colors, and they should have like a gradient in between. And so she said in order to really um, highlight depth and perception and complexity in your drawings and in your images and in your coloring you really needed to have these bright whites and then these deep dark colors to contrast with each other and I never forgot that and I've always um, tried to be conscious of that when I'm drawing or coloring and then at this point I'm just coloring um, the rest of the gang up there Rue, Tiger, Winnie the Pooh, and Eeyore and then at this moment I identified another gap <laughs> in my color penciling in my color pencil inventory and that is kind of like a blue that isn't as green as the one that I have here for ER's shirt um for Rue's shirt I mean Rue actually has a shirt that is a little bit less green a little bit more blue I didn't have that color and so I went with this more like cerulean teal but that's fine and then lastly, I'm coloring in Eeyore. I actually had to go look up what Eeyore looked like because I don't really pay attention to Eeyore, honestly. And I didn't remember off the top of my head what colors he was. So I had to look it up. But I just ended up using nice slates and blues and grays to color in Eeyore. And then added that little pink bow on his tail. Very, very cute. And at this point, I wanted to add honeybee stickers to the page. And so I went to go look for them because I, <laughs> I couldn't find them. I had no idea where they were. Um, I was looking all over for them. I remember seeing them somewhere. And, and then I don't remember like where I had seen them. And so I was looking like everywhere for these honeybee stickers, trying to find them. And so I just disappeared for a couple of minutes at this point, and you won't see me come back for a little bit now. Um, but I just wanted to take this moment to say that um, I really appreciate every one of you who leaves such sweet comments on my videos and is always supporting my content and and just being so kind it really does mean the world to me i really appreciate it it's a lot of work to create videos and put them out there and it's also just like something that is a little bit vulnerable like you're putting yourself out there to, for the entire world you open yourself up to judgment you open yourself up to anonymous um, critiques from p people all over the world and for the most part um, I would say that I've had a really, really positive and amazing experience on YouTube thanks to the type of people who watch my videos and support me. And so I'm very, very grateful for that. And I always want to give back to the community that has been so kind to me and and really like supported me and pushed me to, to be on this platform. Um, I'm very grateful for everyone here. I consider you all friends. And the fact that you all support and watch my videos Videos, um, is really really motivating it really motivates me to have a healthier lifestyle because I'm posting about fitness I'm posting about wellness I'm posting about you know productivity and routines and the fact that 
um, I'm sharing this content with everyone. It's kind of like an accountability system for me, honestly. And so, and so I really feel like y'all are really helping me live my best life. And um, I am like completely grateful for that. And also the fact that y'all watch my videos and support me, it does push me to create more content, to share my creativity and to, because of that, I'm able to continue to evolve and develop creatively as an artist, as a planner, as a person. And that is just like such a gift. And I really am super thankful for all of you for that. And what I'm trying to get at is um, I do want to give back in some small way to you all, um, to this community that supports me. And one day, once my stickers are really starting to come out, I really want to be giving out like stickers and hosting giveaways of my own stickers to people and just sending out like care packages. But right now, my stickers aren't ready to be shared like that. <laughs> once I have them, um, at least in the cricket phase where they're actually being cut, then I'll consider <laughs> giving them out as prizes during giveaways. But for now, um, something that I really enjoy doing is creating these custom cover pages, like these custom name pages for people. Um, I did one on my channel for Mani a few months ago, or maybe a year ago at this point. I'll link that in the cards up above. And I've also done one for my friend Jess. Um, I didn't do it on a video, but I did it just when I was hanging out with her. Um, we were doing an art night at her place. I'll pop a picture of that um, on the screen somewhere, but it's something I've enjoyed doing and I find people enjoy it as well. So if you are at all interested in having a custom cover page from me, I would love to create one for you, um, particularly for all of those people who have been longtime supporters of my channel, who are very active in the comments. That doesn't mean that if you haven't been commenting, you can't have one or you can't request one. I'll definitely still love to give that to you if I can. And of course, it all really depends on how much time and how many people want one. If a few people want one, then I can probably get through them pretty quickly. But if, you know, more than 10 people want one, then it might take me a while to get those out. Anyways, just let me know um, if you would like one. Uh, go ahead and send me a message on Instagram. Or if you don't have any other social medias, um, my email is down below. Go ahead and send me an email there. And yeah, just tell me um, what size of planner you use, what your name is, um, and what kind of style or aesthetic that you want to have. You can be as general or as specific as you'd like. If you want a Winnie the Pooh cover page, um, I can make that happen as well. So yeah, just let me know. Okay, so at this point, I finally found the honeybee stickers. They were in my Cafecita Designs sticker storage book. And so I pulled them out and I just started sprinkling them all over the cover page um, just for a little extra pop and for some fun. And I think it was really cute. I like how it turned out. I have a soft spot in my heart for honeybees, of course. So I just wanted to add those. And lastly, I just punched the cover page with my big punch and then I popped it into my planner. And and that was it, and she was done. She's gorgeous. Y ya no sabe lo que pasa.